Thank you, Larry and Teresa, for uh, the excellent worship this morning. So today we are starting a new sermon series. Uh, we're going to the book of Jeremiah. We'll get to that uh, in the minute of why I picked that book and what we can at least uh, take out of the book of Jeremiah, uh, in the Old Testament. But I want us to start thinking about the first day of our job. Uh, for some of us, that might have been uh, longer than, than some ago, uh, many moons ago, but a uh, new job, that could be a very exciting thing. Uh, maybe if it's the job that you went to college for, uh, a job that just uh, you feel like you're gifted in, and that might be a very exciting time. But sometimes new jobs can be confusing. They can be difficult because you have to answer that question of, okay, why am I here? What exactly is my role in this business or corporation or organization or whatever job you're in? Sometimes that can be um, a, a very scary time because maybe it's not very clearly defined uh, of, of what you're doing or your job description isn't very clearly defined. So you have to ask that question. Why me? What is my purpose here? But maybe you had a great boss or a great supervisor who very much saw your gifts, uh, they saw your abilities, and they might have very much put a very descriptive job description for you in the position that you had. So you knew exactly what you were doing. You knew exactly the role that you had. And you knew that you could succeed and excel at this job because you had it right there uh, with you uh, to know what you had to do to be successful at this job. So even if we feel like we're totally inadequate uh, for our job, uh, maybe a great boss or supervisor will at least just recognize those gifts and abilities. So maybe we're the ones that aren't so sure about this, but we have a boss or a supervisor who believes in us, who will make it their mission to make your job successful in what you are there to do. Well, we know that God has a purpose for our lives as well. He knew us before we were even born, right? He knows that we all have gifts and abilities that he wants us to live out, and he wants, those, wants us to live out those truths with boldness, okay? In the Old Testament, we do meet a prophet. We meet a prophet named Jeremiah. And Jeremiah lived in a very difficult time in Judah's history. It was full of sinful behavior. It was full of disobedience. And the big thing is that no one wanted to listen to God's word. No one wanted to listen to what the word of God had to say. But God knew Jeremiah's purpose. He had made no mistake in picking Jeremiah. And he certainly didn't make a mistake and created him to live in the time that he did. So the next couple of months, we are going through the book of Jeremiah, not chapter by chapter or verse by verse like we did with, with Philippians. That would take too long. But also, it's important that we're going to do theme by theme. This is going to be really important because we have to, we're able to see if we go theme by theme of how God was able to use one man to impact the world around him. But also to see the trials and the challenges that he had to face along the way. But he also clung to God, he, he trusted God's word, and he trusted the purpose for which God had called him to live. So it's important to look at these Old Testament books like Jeremiah, because the people of Jeremiah's day are similar very much so to the people of today. As we know, our world has very much become hostile and in hatred of the word of God. We know that our culture sinks deeper and deeper into, into sin. And those who speak out and stand for the Lord and stand for righteousness can sometimes even be mocked, or maybe I've, I've even heard been labeled as extremists. I'm sure we've heard that, that, that language and words in, uh, in our news today. So it's important that, that the culture in Jeremiah's time, we can look at the culture today, and we can see some parallels too. So that's another important reason why we want to look at uh, the book of Jeremiah and these Old Testament prophets. And we know through our end times belief that a day of judgment is coming, whether the people around us want to believe that or not. So this message may make us as believers not popular, right? This message of judgment. And at times we actually may feel like if we're preaching the word of God or preaching uh, the Bible, that sometimes we can feel like that we're preaching to deaf ears, right? I'm sure that's, that's something we felt before. But we're called to remain faithful to the Lord. We may grieve over the stubbornness and unbelief of those around us, but we as believers can't give up. We have to stay firm. We have to stay righteous. We are to find strength in the Lord to fulfill our ministry. So without further ado, let us turn to Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 19, which is the whole chapter of chapter 1 here this morning. So Jeremiah chapter 1. <clears throat> 
Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 1 through 19 says this. Ooh. The word of the Lord came. Okay. Okay, we get all right. The words of Jeremiah, the son of uh, Hilkiah, one of the priests who were with who were in Anathom in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Amron, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of jo Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, and until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, to the captivity of Jerusalem in the fifth month. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a youth. For to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over the nations, over kingdoms, to pluck up and break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. And the, and the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I see, I see an almond branch. And the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I'm watching over my word to perform it. The word of the Lord came to me a second time saying, what do you see? And I see, I see a boiling pot facing away from the north. And the Lord said to me, out of the north disaster shall be let loose upon the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I am calling all the tribes of the kingdoms of the north, declares the Lord, and they shall come, and everyone shall set his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem, against all its walls, all around, and against all the cities of Judah. And I will declare my judgments against them. For all their evil in forsaking me, we have made offerings to other gods and worshiped the works of their own hands. So, wow, we see a long passage here, long passage here, the whole chapter of, of chapter one of uh, the book of Jeremiah. And I think the first thing uh, that I see here, when we think of our own individual purpose, right, when we think of our own purpose for which, which God has created us to be, we have to understand that that is, of course, God's purpose. And it's comforting to know that he knows us before we are born. Wow. Well, what a thought. If we look down at verse five here, it's pretty cut and clear that the Lord knew Jeremiah before he was born. And not only just before he was born, but before he was even in the womb. Of course, this passage has been used many times to show the value of life, and rightfully so. It doesn't matter what kind of background you have. It doesn't matter the color of the skin you have. The truth is your life matters. God set you apart. God knew you before uh, you were formed in your mother's womb. He knows us. He knew you. That means he has a purpose for you. He had a purpose for Jeremiah. He has a purpose for all of us. So he knows us. He knew Jeremiah inside and out. He knew who he was. That's an incredible comforting thought to know he thinks that about us. But also as we go into this passage here in Jeremiah, he knows Jeremiah. He knows his mission. He knows why he is created. He knows his purpose. So when I say that he knew him, I do indeed mean a personal knowledge, okay? This means that the Lord knew Jeremiah at his best and at his worst. And nothing will ever catch him off guard or surprise, right? There's nothing that Jeremiah can do that would surprise God. He knew how much of a struggle this would be for Jeremiah. As a youth, it says in this passage, that, that's one of the first things that Jeremiah does in this response uh, with his calling is he says, but I'm only a youth. So he knew how much of a struggle it would be for him. And almost too, as later we get on, how heartbroken he would be to witness his own people reject God and reject the teachings of God. Had to have been a very difficult thing for Jeremiah, but God knew his heart. And I'm sure we know what it means to personally know someone well. 
uh, that nothing catches you off guard. I think if we're you know, talking about our spouse or our close family member, uh, there's different things that they do or say that we can just expect that it's coming, right? We can just expect that it's going to happen. And it's not just that God knows Jeremiah, but as he tells him, I consecrated, I consecrated you. So I set apart the word to make holy. In other words, I chose you for this task. I picked you to serve at this capacity to what God has called him to do. For us here in the body of Christ today, we know uh, we have to remember that God has designed us. He has designed you and all of us as a member of the body of Christ. That becomes there's roles, there's different gifts, there's different abilities. We are set apart from the world around us to serve Christ in only ways that we can do. We were designed for this role. That's an incredible thought too, looking at our life too, here in the body of Christ, here in the church age to do that. We were designed for this era of human history. We were designed to go forth in our world today. And of course, we know uh, for us, it's, it's to be ministers of reconciliation, to preach the gospel, the death and resurrection of Christ. And for Jeremiah too, a time in human history called, set apart, made for this. So what else does God tell Jeremiah in this early part of chapter one? Well, he says, I appointed you. So God here isn't asking for volunteers, right? He's not saying, raise your hand if you want to be a prophet, right? Anyone? Anyone who wants to be a prophet of mine? No, right? God ordains individual people as he foreknows all things. So God had a plan for Jeremiah even before he took his first breath even before his first cry on earth, God knew his plan for this young man, Jeremiah. His parents didn't know anything about the purpose either, but God did. He didn't know anything about the plan. And God, uh, but God of course does. And does God only have a plan for prophets or apostles today? Is that the only thing that we can think of when we look at the Bible is, okay, there's a prophet of the Old Testament. Uh, we look at the, the um, the parts of the New Testament with the Apostle Paul, and we would think of even Peter and John. Um, is, are those the only people in Scripture that God has a plan for? And I think Scripture teaches us no. He has a plan for all of his people, all of us today. And, and that plan may include seasons of hardship, right? Seasons of rejection from others, and even some seasons of loneliness, okay? Those are all three things that we read about the Bible of Old Testament people, New Testament people. Those are a part of, I think, sometimes the Christian journey and sometimes being ambassadors uh, for God. And we wrote, no, uh, Romans 8, uh, 29, for all things uh, will come to good. Or Romans 8, 20, 28. And the biggest piece for Jeremiah in discovering his purpose was similar uh, to that of Paul and Peter, and that was to preach. Okay, so this was a part of Jeremiah's individual purpose was to preach. And God gave Jeremiah a message to speak, a message to speak for his people and to his people. And I would imagine that Jeremiah was nervous about this call. I think that's why he questioned maybe God at first. If I'm only a youth. There had to have been some nerves going on in this young boy's uh, heart. Because again, he's a young man, but he's to go out and to preach God's word amongst the people. People that are rejecting him, people that don't want anything to do with God, has to be nerve-wracking for this young man. And certainly he had witnessed uh, the ministry of other prophets too, who boldly proclaimed a message from God. And he wondered, am I really cut out for this? You sure you picked the right guy? I've never been good with words, he said. I'm just a kid, he said. I haven't been trained for any of this. And I mentioned Paul uh, earlier with his call uh, to preach. And if we call, recall back to Acts chapter 9, uh, the Lord tells Ananias, after much fear, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So this is kind of a similar uh, appointing as Jeremiah received. Sure, it's different because we know the dispensational uh, implications of Paul uh, during his calling, and that point remains. Uh, but, but the point remains of go forth, right? Go forth, preach my name to the people. Be obedient to me and be obedient to your calling, okay? That's a very similarity between 
between Paul and Jeremiah's calling. And we read this passage before. We read this back in uh, our Philippian sermon series, but this comes from Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse 1. It says, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. So that specific calling and purpose for which we have been called may individually look different. So from one person to one person, that may look a little bit different. But here in this age of grace, again, those minister, being a minister of reconciliation, preaching Christ, preaching Christ crucified and his resurrection, that should be the purpose of all of us, okay? We're all called to do that. We're all called to be evangelists. And I, I've always loved this quote. I've shared it before of the second we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In that second, we sign up for full-time ministry. And I love that quote because I think it's so true of, the, of something that we all may have different gifts. We might all come from different backgrounds. We all may have a different role necessarily in the body of Christ. But again, the big central purpose to make others see uh, the message of the grace of God here. And, and as we get deeper and deeper into the book of Jeremiah uh, with his calling, with, with his ministry, we have to be reminded that Jeremiah is an example of remaining faithful to God and preaching the truth, even in a world that doesn't want to hear it. So even as Jeremiah said, I do not know how to speak, God responded by saying, to all to whom I send you, shall, go, shall you go, whatever I command you, you shall speak. So God would tell him what to say. Jeremiah he was only the messenger here. The message would come from the Lord. To prove this, the Lord touched Jeremiah's mouth, and he said, I have put my words in your mouth. So that's powerful, right? That's special. Jeremiah's purpose here is to be the mouthpiece. So he wasn't special. He didn't have all the gifts, the training, the abilities, but God made him special because, of course, we know we serve a very mighty and powerful God. That's just an incredible thing to know, to know that truth, that it is God's word. It is God's power that he is just using this one man to be, to be a vessel, to be a mouthpiece. I love those two illustrations here. And I can think of two things uh, that would give me, um, that would give me uh, comfort, I guess, um, if I were to put myself in Jeremiah's shoes. And I can imagine um, that Jeremiah felt these two things as two, well, the first one I just said, comfort, is comfort itself. And I think comfort uh, because uh, it is not up to the prophet. It's not up to him, himself, Jeremiah, to think of clever words or even proper speech in order to convince the culture around him. But instead, he simply called to remain faithful to God's word, and the ministry would be fulfilled. So, of course, it's important to preach. Of course, it's important to have words that are able to resonate with the people you're preaching to, but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is faithfulness, faithfulness. And if, and if Jeremiah knows he can be faithful to God's word, if Jeremiah knows that he can be faithful in his appointing of this ministry, then he knows he can find comfort in knowing that he is doing everything that God has called him to do. And looking at the world around us today, whenever we're sharing our faith or doing any type of evangelism for that matter, we're to remember that the words do not come from you or us. They come from God. So just preach the word and let God do the rest, right? That's our hope. That's something that we can, that we here, the body of Christ can trust on as well. Just preach the word, preach the gospel, share the gospel. It's God's message, not ours. That should definitely give us comfort. The second thing I just said was responsibility, right? Responsibility to stay true to the word of God. Do not deviate or try to soften the message to make it more appealing to the audience. That's something to remember. And I'm reminded in 2 Timothy chapter 2, Paul's command uh, to Timothy. This has been a, a passage that's been prayed over me uh, as, a, as a younger pastor many times. And that is to preach the word. Okay, Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Right? This is an important thing. This is a charge for not just pastors and teachers, but for all of us. Being ready in season and out. Doesn't matter where you're at. If you're at the grocery store or at, you're at church, be prepared. Doesn't matter what you're going through. Be prepared. And make sure that you are able to correct and rebuke and encourage 
encourage everyone in the body of Christ. So there might be a temptation sometimes to maybe soften down the message or, or water down the, the message, especially if we know that the gospel may not easily be received to those around us. If we know that we're preaching to non-believers, it might be a little bit easier to kind of shrink down, water it down. We can't do that. Jeremiah probably knew staying faithful to God's word would get him into trouble with probably very powerful people in his time. And here today, unfortunately, it's not just uh, your everyday people who may shrink down, but sometimes a lot of our modern day preachers have failed to stay true to the word of God. They leave out parts about sin. They leave out parts about judgment. They tell people what they want to hear instead of what they need to hear. They ignore sin. They ignore disobedience of our world. And they only focus on the love and the mercy of God, right? We've all heard that God is love. Love wins. We've heard those, those words in our culture before. And we'll talk uh, later uh, on in, in the book of Jeremiah, in the weeks to come, I'm definitely going to do a sermon series on false teachers and false prophets, because that was a big part of uh, Jeremiah's day, and as well as our own day as well, and I really look forward to that. But the big thing that I think that we can take from this passage right here is God told Jeremiah, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. He wasn't called to share his own ideas about religion or philosophy for that matter. He wasn't offering his own advice. He wasn't being a counselor, right? He wasn't sharing his opinions, just rattling off his beliefs like a, like a politician maybe. But he was to preach the word of God. He was to let the word of God change the hearts and the minds to those who were around him. So God has given his people today the word of God to proclaim in our age. And of course, it doesn't come the same way it came to Jeremiah. There's no prophets today in the same manner. And the New Testament even tells us that that gift of prophecy uh, would cease in this age of grace, this dispensation, this present dispensation. But we have the written word of God. We have the complete canon of the word of God and the message given by the Lord through his prophets and apostles to us. We don't need prophets anymore, right? We don't need all these sign gifts anymore. We have the complete canon, all the prophets of the Old Testament and the apostles of the New. We have it right here at our hands. So when I or any other pastor uh, comes to the pulpit on a Sunday morning and we're called to proclaim God's word, it's not my ideas. It's not my advice. It's not my opinions I'm spewing to you all here today, but it's the word of God. It's God's word revealed to us. That's such an important thing to grasp. That's such an important thing of ministry and preaching and, and a church life, of remembering that it's God's word revealed to us, the messenger, the proclaimer, the mouthpiece. That's all it is here. So when any other believer shares the word of God with others, they are called to not proclaim their own ideas, but again, proclaim the word of God the word of God revealed to us through scripture. And there's some urgency to this. Uh, in 2017, Gala, Gala Missions Group, Barna, I think too, they're affiliated with us, a big missions organization. And they did a poll, um, only called a thousand people. So I guess it's kind of a smaller poll. And they asked all Americans, so you can assume that there's some non-believers that were polled, probably quite a few non-believers in this poll that were surveyed. And they asked, what is your view of the Bible? To one thousand, over, I think it was 1,010 people they called, asked the same question. What is your view of the Bible? Only 24% said it's the word of God. Now, that same poll was just done a couple months ago here in 2022. So just five years later from 2017, that same poll, different 1,000 people, but same number. Five short years later, only 20% said it was the word of God. So we're on a rapid decline of people's view of this book being authoritative, of this book being the word of God, that this book is the only power that we have to change the hearts and lives of our world around us. What's even more sad about that poll, okay, 20% said that it's the actual word of God. Well, 29% said that all the Bible is, is a book of fairy tales and legends and moral truths that man has invented so that's what we're going against in our culture today that that's the ideas and the thoughts that we're going against in our world 
uh, around us. These are our coworkers. These are our neighbors. So you'd be foolish to think that all people who felt well this way uh, of the Bible were non-believers. You'd be foolish to think that the only people who said um, that it wasn't, so that 80% who, who said it wasn't the word of God, you'd be, you'd be foolish to think that those people are all non-believers. No. And the reason I'm telling you this is because there are people in the church. There's our, there are pastors too who don't have that view of the Bible. And the reason I'm telling you all of this is because we have to be like Jeremiah here, faithful to the word of God. We can't let society or culture dictate how we share God's word. We can't be afraid of words like sin, words like unrighteousness. We have to look upon the cross and see our crucified Messiah, right? We have to look upon the cross to see who died for our sins. And we know that in Genesis chapter 1, 26, or chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, we can see that we are created in the image of God. He creates us uniquely and individually with our own purpose, in his, with a purpose um, in his image. Then when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, that image was distorted with sin, okay? The view itself was distorted. But then we know came Christ, right? We know who came, Christ, our Messiah. And I love uh, the author of Hebrews, his depiction, his wordage of who Christ is. And he is the sun. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact uh, imprint or expression of his nature, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. I love that. Jesus wasn't created in the, Jesus wasn't just created in the image of God, but he is the image of God. How exciting is that? What does that mean for us? Does this have anything to do with Jeremiah and what we have talked about today? Yes, it does. It means that there's hope and there's a purpose for us, despite the brokenness around us, despite the brokenness even within us. There's hope because of who Christ is. Jeremiah could only look forward to the day when God would reconcile himself back to mankind. Jeremiah's job was just to preach the word, be a prophet of God, staying faithful to him. He could only imagine the day where again, God and earth could become reconciled through the person of Jesus Christ. So again, all he could do is be faithful and obedient as a prophet of God to the land of Judah and the people there. So maybe you felt lonely again. Maybe you felt confused at times because it was hard to figure out what is your role in the body of Christ? Why are you here? Why are you here now specifically? What can you contribute to the body of Christ? What is your purpose? And I guess my answer to that question is find your gifts, find your abilities, use them to better strengthen the body of Christ. But most importantly, always share the gospel. Your testimony is a very valuable thing. I think sometimes we in the church, we underestimate our testimony. Everyone in this room today, if they put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, they, we have a story. We have a story of when we crossed that bridge from death to life. Don't underestimate that story. Don't underestimate what God has done in your life. Because I believe the greatest way here in 2022 that God can show his love to the world is through his people. Well, who are his people? We, the church, are his people. So don't underestimate your testimony. That's a very powerful thing. And we know that God kept Jeremiah we, at the end there of, of Jeremiah chapter one. We know that God had a plan to, of protection of Jeremiah. He was going to protect Jeremiah from all the other things around him, the sin, the, the disobedience, the destruction. That's another thing that we have to remember too, is that God will always protect us as well. We are his people and we are eternally secure in his hand. Nothing can pluck you from my hand is what Jesus said. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So again, we can look at the story of Jeremiah. We can look at his faithfulness and finding what was his purpose? Why was he here? What was he doing? We can see, oh, it was to be a prophet of God. It was to preach the world, the, to, the word to the world. And again, here in the body of Christ, we all have different gifts and abilities. But again, staying faithful to that message, being faithful to this book, because this book is uh, God's word inspired to us, revealed to us. God's word revealed to us. That's just such an important thing. I cannot stress that enough of the faithfulness to God by following his word, by following his teachings and to proclaiming that in the world around us. So even though this is an Old Testament passage, 
even though this was years before Christ and, of course, the gospel of the grace of God revealed to us, we can still find truth. We can still find hope. And, and, um, and definitely, we can see this book point to Christ to come. The people around him wanted to reject him. The people around our world today want to reject the message. But we know it's the only message that can change hearts and lives around us. Let us pray. Father, we are thankful for your word. We're thankful for the prophet Jeremiah that we're starting to look at today. There's such an incredible introduction to the book that we've read today in chapter one, an introduction and meeting a young man, Jeremiah, who was afraid because he was young. But we know that you had a plan for him. That plan included sharing the gospel. Well, the word of God back then. But here today, we are called to share the gospel. And of course, that's just such an important part of who we are at this church, of being uh, mission O with our life, mission focused, mission O in the world around us. And we just pray for everyone here today, Father, to remember the prophet Jeremiah, but also to remember their marching orders as well. I pray for, for all of us today who are maybe still trying to find our gifts, trying to find our abilities. What are we even here for? Father, I pray that we are able to find that and to impact the body of Christ in ways that we could never do on our own accord, but we can always do through your strength, through your peace, Father. Again, we lift your name above, the name that is above every name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we know one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess those words. Father, again, we lift your name above. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you.